Hey everyone, Jack Keeper here, and today we are going to take a look at XFCE 4.16. And this is a release that just came out this month. And by the way, Happy New Year! It's the end of December, and we're about to put 2020 into the rear view mirror. And I think for most of us, it couldn't happen soon enough. <laughs> so anyways, 4.16 XFCE is the next release, the previous being 4.14, which was, I believe, released back in, uh, what, probably 2016-ish? About four years ago, I believe. So this is a pretty big update for XFCE. And I thought I'd jump in here and explore it a little bit and kind of see what's new. I am using the Garuda spin uh, since I've been kind of playing with Garuda lately anyway because it kind of coincides with the new release of 4.16. And of course, being that Garuda is arch based, it's going to have the latest and greatest anyways. So we do have 4.16 and we can just kind of verify that by just kind of looking at our XFWM version here. I guess we need another hyphen in there. Okay, there we go. And so it's showing that we're at 4.16 for our window manager and XFCE. So, very cool. Why don't we explore this a little bit and kind of see what new features are available. Now they did list them out on their website, of course, uh, but it always kind of helps when you can really see them visually. One thing you might want to take note of, of course, is uh, Gruda has a beautiful setup here. I mean, XFCE looks great right out of the box. If we were to install our kind of the traditional way, you'd probably have kind of a more vanilla look, probably with the uh, blue background, if I remember right, with a mouse. Although I heard they did update that wallpaper too, so that's kind of cool as well. So let's take a look. But one of the first things I noticed is when you go in here and you look at your panel preferences, there's a new feature which I really like. And that is that they have, under appearance, a dark mode. And I really like that because in the past, I ran XFCE a lot, especially for my wife because she needed something really stable. And all the years that I ran Manjaro, and Arco Linux. I pretty much stuck with XFCE most of the time, especially for her, because it just seemed like XFCE was always rock stable. And when other desktops like GNOME and KDE and so forth, whenever I would kind of implement those for everyday work, there was always something. There was always some little quirk. When she had Cinnamon, I remember there was a problem with something we ran in Wine, you know. There was always some little thing, but with XFCE, there was never an issue with anything. It was always just trouble free. For a long time, we used that. Now, with that said, you know, lately, uh, using Plasma 5, we haven't had any issues at all either. It seems like Plasma 5, as of 5.1 anyways, seems to be rock stable too. However, I always have a soft spot for XFCE. <laughs> so, what I really like here is this new feature, it's the dark mode. And why is that cool? Right now it's off by default on the Garuda distro. But here's why I like it. It may seem kind of trivial to some people, but this is what I like. Now in the past, when I was in my settings and let's say I went into appearance here and I wanted to change my theme, uh, such as a light theme. You know, a lot of times I liked having a light theme as opposed to a dark theme because I'd have my light background and when I opened up a file manager, you know, you have your light. And sometimes I just like that better. The problem is when I'd hit the Edweta or whatever theme that's a light theme, my bar down here turns white. And of course, the menu's white. And I've always liked having a dark menu and a dark bar, but white backgrounds up here. So I'd have to go through a lot of extra hoops to kind of customize the theme the way I wanted it. So I could have a pretty much light theme except uh, with a dark bar and a dark menu. And if you found the right theme, you could do that. But now with this option, we can go in here and go into our panel preferences and hit dark mode. And now we got our dark bar with our light 
theming in the background for other things. That's really cool. That's, that's a really nice touch for the new XFCE. And even the menu is dark. That's exactly what I've always wanted. <laughs> and here it is. Yeah, a big kudos to the XFCE team on that one. And while I'm in my menu, I'm gonna just tweak this a little bit because this is a new install and I'm on a virtual machine. So uh, when you go in here, you click on the different categories here and then it changes and lets you see what's in there. By default, I like to hover over that and have that change with a hover. So I'm just gonna jump in here, go into my properties. I right clicked on the menu icon there. And then I am going to select behavior and select under menu here, switch categories by hovering. And then I'm gonna close. And there we go. Yeah, that's better. All right, had to get that out of the way. Now, one thing I'm not really sure about is in the past, I used to have a screen tearing issue. That's something I really haven't tested yet. In fact, it didn't occur to me until just right now when I was making this video. <laughs> But in the past, what I had to do to get around that screen tearing was I had to turn off the compositor. And that by itself was not really a, an appealing option. But after turning off the compositor, now I believe Compton has changed to PyCom. If you do have a screen tearing issue, what worked for me anyways, you could turn off the compositing in your settings, which would be here under your window manager tweaks and compositor tab and if you would just uncheck this guy here then install Compton if you're on Ubuntu uh, I think it would be sudo apt get probably PyCom but here on Arch it would simply be sudo pacman and I already have it hyphen s PyCom and that's how I would kind of get around that problem. But like I said, don't know if screen tearing is still an issue. I guess I'll have to test that out and maybe I'll just mention that in the description at some point in the future when I get the chance to do that. So moving on, uh, some other things that have been kind of added in here. Let's just back out of there. Also in your panel, under items, we have a status tray plugin. And this is related to your status down here. So one thing they did was they combined a couple of features here. So if I were to go in here and then jump in there, that seems to be different. And now we have our status notifiers and SysTray icons all in kind of one little area where we can just kind of jump back and forth and do our tweaking as necessary. We can hide some and unhide whatever you like to do there, change the order. So that's a pretty cool little change. Another thing I noticed, and I don't know if this is new in 4.16 or if it changed previously, but it used to be when you right clicked on the desktop, you would see applications here and you could just kind of select application menu. And to get to that, we would simply right click on our desktop, go into our desktop settings and then select menus. And right up here, we have the option to include the application menu on desktop right click and even another option here to show the application icons. I think I'll just click both of them just for the heck of it. So then when we click on our desktop, we have, when we right click, then we have applications and here we go. And there's our icons next to it. And that's the other thing I always like about XFCE is for the most part, your actions are instantaneously updated as you select them. So if I was to unselect this, then it would already be out of there. No icons. So yeah, I always kind of like that about XFCE. Same with the backgrounds. You can change your backgrounds right on the fly and you don't have to hit apply. So that's one feature I've always kind of liked. Another item of note is the icons. XFCE has new default icons like if we go into our settings manager here you can see there's a new look for the xfce icons which gives it a nice overall appeal to its identity not so you know old school 
And so that's looking really nice. I really like what they've done to that. And if I remember right on their website, they had mentioned that they're all based on a common color palette for consistency across the platform and that they're going to continue to add to these icons. So they are nice. I gotta tell you, they do look really nice and it does give it a fresh new look. Not so vanilla like it used to be. <laughs> so I'm liking that. That's really kind of noteworthy, I think. Another thing I think is noteworthy, since we're in here in the settings manager, if we run down to our default applications right here, then you'll see that they kind of combine our like our mime settings here and our default applications all in one area so it's kind of less confusing so i kind of like that and here we got them kind of categorized that's very cool default fire manager terminal emulator and of course the others so that's kind of nice that they got them all combined here's our mime types here so it's all in kind of one area you know a little bit less confusing so that's that's a good feature. I like it. Okay, moving along in our display settings here. Some changes here. As you notice here under our resolution, it's showing our aspect ratio here, kind of grayed off in the side. And then it'll have our recommended settings with an asterisk denoting recommended. In this case, I'm running a virtual, so for some reason it thinks 1024 by 768 is the way to go and that's probably because of my settings in my KBM QEMU settings however I got it set here at 1920 by 1080 which is where I want to keep it so that's one thing that has changed and then our scaling also has has now become you have fractional options for your different settings in this case we have 1.5 and then 2x and depending on your resolution and aspect ratio and so forth that fractional can really uh, vary a lot and I don't remember the range, but you can go like, I think 0.1 all the way up to a pretty high setting. <laughs> Can't remember the top end, but the fractional scaling is pretty nice. So let's back out of here. And another thing I thought was really cool, I'm just gonna push that off to the side for a minute. In Thunar, there were some improvements made as well into the file manager, I guess the most really noticeable one would be your file transfers. So if you had a big file, like say a, a four gig ISO or some movie file and you're transferring it to say your U drive and it's moving along and you get it about 25% and all of a sudden you realize, oh my God, I must stop this. You can actually pause your transfer and it will pause after you've had a pee break or something and come back and resume it. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's interesting because I believe uh, there are other file managers where you can do that and that's something that's always kind of been missing and Thunar can do it. So another thumbs up. Oh yeah, and another thing, when you go down here into the menu where you have your window buttons here, you can right click and there's another feature called launch a new instance. So I have a terminal open right now, so I can launch a new instance of that terminal right from here now just from the right click. And I'm pretty sure that wasn't there back in the day when I was using it before. It's pretty cool. I like that too. So, And I believe there are some other things that were in there too, options that weren't there before. But uh, that one was the most noteworthy one, I think. Also, I believe you got an auto-hide animation too. So if I just kind of jump back into the panel preferences where we were before, and we automatically hide our panel, I guess it's unintelligent right now. Maybe always we'll stick it there for now and just uh, see how that works. So now if we go and close this, that animates uh, auto hide. So instead of just kind of popping up and down, I guess and now it slides. So that's kind of new. I never used to have mine auto hide anyway, so I'm not really quite sure the contrast there. I guess in the past, maybe it wasn't animated in the same way. So. Yeah, nice. So that's that feature. And I guess I'll just kind of go back and untweak that because I just kind of like it showing all the time, personally. So I'll just say, never. And we'll go with that. Great. And also, in our XFCE About, it's also got a new look here. 
So we got our system info, a little bit of extra information here, our version and OS type and all that, device name. This is all pretty cool. GPU, uh, about a bit more handsome there with a lot of details coming all the way down. Very cool. And it looks like there's even some links to where you can get to these different places where you can get to a website and see more information on each of those little thingies available. Pretty cool. And then of course your credits and copyright and all that other good stuff. And even has the licenses broken down so you can kind of understand what they all mean. Fun stuff. And also, let's see, what else? Oh yeah, our power manager. Here we go. So they've done some changes in here too. Like, I think the most notable one was, where was that? Yeah, so I can't really show it here because I'm not on a laptop, but normally you would have an on battery or unplugged in, I believe it is. You'd have a couple of tabs here so you can kind of adjust the settings on both. And I'll just, there's a picture right here so you can see what I'm talking about. So before it was kind of clunky and you had, you know, like a big table or something that you uh, kind of dealt with. And so now it's, yeah, more modern. So that's kind of a nice feature too. What do I think of it overall? I think the new XFCE is really going in a nice direction. I'm glad to see that they're not being left behind by the, the other desktops. I believe GNOME is coming out with uh, four now. So that'll be interesting to see where that goes. And XFCE, well, like I said near the beginning of this video, I've always had a soft spot for XFCE. It always rock stable, never had issues with it, except, you know, like I said in the beginning, I had some screen tearing issues when I was making videos. And I will look into that to see if that has been resolved in 4.16. And if not, then we'll see if my old solutions still work because I used to just simply turn off the XFWM4 and use Compton, which is now PICOM, P-I-C-O-M. So that may still be the solution for that, provided that that screen tearing issue is still there and it may or may not be. So with that, I gotta say, the XFCE 4.16 is looking really good. So if you're an XFCE user, give it a try and see what you think and leave a comment down below and let me know your experience. And I'm sure I missed something. So anything I might've missed that you wanna chime in about, leave a comment and let me know. And remember, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.